Welcome back, and we can finally fly out some props again, instead of all the top tier garbage that I've been putting out for the last two or three weeks, because, well, I like to cover the stuff. That's a new first, and, well, this patch was nothing but top tier jets, and yes, I'm just as sick of it as you are. So today we are going to be flying out the FAU-47, and the FAU-47 got quite a buff and a nerf at the same time. The engine now is absolutely ridiculous, however, the airframe got nerfed a little bit it compresses a lot more it turns worse and it's all in all just a harder plane to play bad with this that the guns are not that great anymore and you're looking at a plane that's actually kind of frustrating to play now it's still very good and there is a little bit of a, a thing i want to teach you guys today and that's about overshooting and staying on people's sixes and you don't always have to throttle drop so in this first game here we're gonna be taking some pop shots at this f109 G. We're not exactly sure which one it is, but it's not really that important. The thing that I'm going to be doing in this fight is on purpose. I can do this a lot easier and I can break off prematurely and go into a kind of a looping motion. But I will make a video on this later and I will include this exact same clip. So I don't, I don't want to put too much emphasis on it. But I want to show you guys that it's relatively easy if you have a plane with much more speed and power... That you don't really have to worry about overshooting all that much. The 109G already got some hits in. So we're going to shoot at him a little bit more. He's going very slow. It makes it a relatively easy shot. So I'm just kind of spraying at him. I'm kind of leading the shots. I keep getting hits in. But you can tell that these guns are just not it anymore. And the turn rate of this thing. You're definitely going to notice it. Because now I'm on the 6 of the 109G. And this is the first game that I did in the FU47. So I wasn't actually aware of how bad the FM change really was. And here is when I really start noticing it. Before, exactly this shot right here would have been relatively easy. But now we can't really get shots in at all. Because we are going 680 IAS. And this thing actually compresses quite badly nowadays. But we have all the speed and energy in the world. And we have a lot more power. And on top of that, he's already damaged. So every maneuver he makes is going to bleed more speed than us. So we just kind of put it into a spiral. We go up over his nose. And we are basically baiting this guy to stall out by pulling straight up for us. He kind of desyncs us. Sure, 30 millimeter doesn't actually do any damage. But we are pretty safe here. We're going still to 70 IS. He is stalling below us. So I drop the flaps a little bit to boost our turn rate for a very small amount. And we try to pull in. And we are right back at the exact same position as we were just a little bit ago. And he just goes into this cancer rolling maneuver again. And if you think it looks a little bit unnatural, that's because it is. Look at that. That's some lag for you. Compared to the fact that this thing absolutely bricks up now, I'm not really having it. Now what we can do is break off prematurely and kind of just boom and zoom this guy all day long. But I just wanted to show you how easy it is if you have speed. If you overshoot, you don't need to throttle drop on everyone you run into. Because if we throttle drop this guy, we are actually dead. He's just going to reverse us. And if we then need to spiral away or run away, there is just no chance that we are actually going to get away from him. So the G14 here again tries to pull in. He doesn't have the energy. And we do. So we go into this spiral motion yet again. Drop the flaps and we do the exact same thing again. But now I'm actually kind of getting sick of it. So I'm not instantly diving on him. I'm breaking off a little bit. Put a little bit of separation between us two. And I want to make sure that I'm just not going too fast. I want to stay on this guy. I want to give myself a little bit more of a firing angle. But we worked him all the way down to the deck. I'm just getting sick of overshooting and having to reset. Now he's low. He's slow. And there's no real way to really get away from us anymore. So I just kind of commit to the shot a little bit harder. I position myself properly. And just like that, he is out of the lobby. Before we get into the video any further, thank you to all my YouTube members and my patrons and everyone looking to get this decal right here. Feel free to use my discount code down below. You get a 3% off, I get a cut and you get to put this decal all over your vehicle. So this plane now kind of behaves a bit more some, like something like the F2G. It's not as ridiculous in terms of acceleration and climb rate, but you kind of play it in the same way now. Too bad that the a 3s are absolutely atrocious now and you can't really get that much done with them. Because they went from far out the best to probably the worst 20mm in the game. Which is rather ironic. I'm just glad that they didn't really touch the AM2s. Now I do think that the am 3 is kind of overperformed. But man, are they just absolutely terrible now. So I kill the 109. The Seafire disagrees, I guess. And he tries to team kill us. So 
we just kind of go vertical. We abuse the fact he has horrible energy retention. We put him into this little bit of a spiral. And it doesn't matter that he outturns us. Because he doesn't have the energy to put his nose on us. So combat master 4 times 4 Unfortunately for you, this is a 1v1. So we try to pull in here. I cut the throttle a little bit to get just underneath him. And now we have some position. We are still behind him. We throttle up and we're just going to stay behind his tail. And this way he has to make a full 180 to get his nose on us. And if he tries to follow us upwards, he's just going to stall himself out. And that's exactly what he ends up doing. He's now too slow to really do anything. We prematurely taunt him in the chat. And then we just take his entire plane apart with some of the worst guns in the game. And yes, you are indeed quite a waste of time. Because my man, you fumbled the bag quite badly. So we take him down. That's kill number three. We're gonna call it that. And then we are going to try to win on... Well, on kills. Because we are never going to win this on tickets. And the ticket drain is about to kick in. And we have a Junker 188 right above us. As well as the Donje 335. And the 335 is going for the F2G. So I'm trying to catch him off guard. He actually does see us. He recommits to us. But we shoot in the head on. We break off. And for the first time we are actually blessed with AM trees working in 2023. Now we go for the Junker, but it's just simply too late. We didn't have much rounds left and we don't manage to kill him anyway. So it doesn't really matter, but there's just too many left. There's too little tickets, too little time and we end up losing. So let's look at a game that we actually end up winning. A game that you will find yourself in pretty often. A game filled with jets. And fighting jets in a thing that doesn't have the best guns anymore is pretty dreadful. I'm not going to be lying. But it's not completely hopeless. It's just a little bit hopeless. The issue here is that they are accompanied by some pretty good props. And something like a P51 H is not something I'm very fond of fighting in this thing especially with the new flight model with the old flight model with the fu 4b i wouldn't mind fighting a p51h that much but with the new turn rate and the compression sure you have a better engine now but the p51h outperforms you in the engine department anyway unless you go into these really really low speed fights because then the fu4 just pulls energy out the ass but the p 51 h just turns a little bit too well. How it is right now, I don't know. But when it comes to a 1v1 scenario in Aerobi, where they have the ability to dive on you and pick their fight, I'm not a big fan of it. If it's a 1v1 duel and you both come in head-on, you're both going roughly at the same speed, it might be winnable. But in Aerobi, where they get to choose the initiative, it's not something I'm particularly fond of. So right now I see the F2G go for my Yak-15 buddy. So I'm going to go and help him out. Because I know that the F2G is probably going to dogfight the first guy he actually runs into. Because that's how premium players work. Especially if it's a cheap one. In something like an F2G. And he does exactly as predicted. He goes straight vertical trying to use his energy I guess. But because of that we get directly underneath him. We take his plane apart. And then we just keep on shooting. But look at these guns. That's absolutely dreadful but he dies anyway and we are going to see if he can engage someone else but the f84 actually decides that he wants to engage us so we want to pick up a little bit of speed we also want to cool the engine off and we don't want to stay in front of him for too long right now i just pull in i pull on over his nose and i'm trying to reverse him but he breaks off in time and he's going to make it so that by the time we trim our guns on him he's already going to be way outside of our gun range well he's in our gun range but we're not going to be doing anything realistically if he's paying attention and that's what he's doing so i'm not going to be chasing a guy that's going twice my speed instead i'm going to go for the guy that's directly below us so i just want to make sure that we don't get ganked by this guy later on once we're trying to kill someone else so we are chasing him and i'm trying to line up the shot shoot a little bit i underlead a little he moves a little as well i get some shots in he drops his bombs and i'm not going to be sticking around to find out Go on over, we recommit, he drops more bombs and we have to break off yet again. We don't get bombed for the second time. And this guy is not putting all his eggs in one basket. But eventually, I mean, we can just kind of sit on his ass. And I mean, the A1H is basically an 84 and he doesn't have much energy here. And he lost one of his elevators, so I mean, all in all, this guy is going to do exactly nothing. Matter of cleaning up the kill, tap him. And this time it finally takes his wing off. And that's going to be kill number two. So we fast forward a little bit. Because we are kind of camping the airfield. 
But there's a lot of jets left and jets are just annoying to fight. Our team is kind of gone. And right now I need to make sure that I kill everything I run into. And I take every opportunity that I get. I did an RTB because I don't have the time to do so. I was already on the middle of the map. I knew that these guys were landing. So I know that I have to take my opportunity now. And make sure that this guy doesn't actually get up to speed. So we dive onto him. We fly on over. He doesn't actually pay attention to us. And this makes it so that we can actually kind of shoot at him as he's... Well, let's be honest, he's just completely clueless. And then the final rounds actually take him out. And now there's only three enemies left. We have a Yak-15 in our team as well as an attacker. It's not the most amount of stuff. And we almost get absolutely raw dogged by the guy that we just killed. Would have been a little bit embarrassing considering I just called the guy clueless. But hey, we survived so all is well, I guess. And now there are a few guys left. The enemy has a G8 and one. Which isn't the highest priority. A P-51H as well as an F-84B. And these two planes, these last two planes, are very annoying to deal with. And I notice this G8N1. And I kind of want to get rid of him. Then I notice the P-51H. And I notice that the F-84 is flying away from us towards the 84. So right now I think to myself, I dive on the G8N1. I don't have to worry about this G8. Interrupting the 1v1 that I might have with the P-51H. The P-51H might see me go for the G8N think oh he's going for a bomber he's now an easy kill i'm gonna go for him so i'm trying to speed up the fight with the p51h so that the f84 doesn't come and interrupt it the p51h doesn't take it he keeps flying straight which is a little bit of an issue because the 84 instantly goes down if we take a quick look we see that he's rather inexperienced and i want to fight this guy right now but i notice that the f84 is turning around and i really hope that he doesn't go for us and i hope that he goes for the yak 15 but he uh, decides to do the absolute opposite and he's actually gonna try and come towards us so now i really need to speed up this fight because me and the yak 15 stand absolutely no chance against an f84 now i already did spoil that we are going to be winning it but the way how might surprise you right now i'm just waiting for this f84 to get bored of us and kind of break off and i'm waiting for this p51h to actually engage us Neither of these things are gonna go happen. This P-51H is just gonna be sitting behind us and be an absolute nuisance. He is really making our life difficult and I need to engage this guy quickly. I'm trying to get as far away from the FD4 as possible so I have as much time as I need. But this is not gonna be a quick fight. So I'm really in a tough spot here. I'm about to get double teamed. The Yak-15 is not gonna get here anyone near on time because the f 4 is outrunning him and i'm just gonna go underneath the p51h and i'm just gonna send it if i do not do this and i let this go prolonged that f 4 is just going to absolutely eat me up and i don't want that so we turn into the p51h we manage to get a crit and now we are on the six and we do have some position but i can't really stick very long because the f 4 is coming in very quickly but luckily we have the six of the p51h i go ahead on with the f 4 we break off and now we can recommit to the P-51H. The issue is he turns a lot tighter than us. So we are going to go over him. We should have the energy here because he's already crit. He goes head on with the Yak-15. And this makes it so that we get the 6 of the P-51H. We're going to take this time to take down the P-51H. Turn this into a little bit of a 2v1. And if the F-84 now decides to go down with us. Then the Yak-15 is going to get a very easy time on the 6 of a slow F-84. And he's going to end up winning. 